let's solve the obikes problem then. So let's have a, a quick look around what you've been given. So a file with some fake information. So we have the username, the year that they borrowed it, the month, and then the day that they borrowed it. It's in that format to make our lives easier as that's the way Python dictates we store um, dates and then whether the bike's been returned or not. So you can see I'm the only one that's a decent person to return the bike. In the main, uh, well, the, the Python file, I've given you the pseudocode comments for all of it and left some parts that are more difficult in, for example, calculating the, the, the date or rather making integers into a date. Um, and they all require one line of code to complete. So it might be something that now that you've practiced reading files and so on that you could try without the video um, to achieve it. So if you want to try it yourself, great. Just pause the video here and play it as and when uh, you require help. So anyway, I'm going to complete it here uh, from the same point as you would. So I always start off with the main part until I hit one of the functions. So um, I need to de declare an array to store all the records. So um, I will call it bike hire. It's plural. It's a 2D array of records. The next part we need to do is create a sub procedure, a sub function that's going to return that bike hire data. So it's going to be bike hires equals, and because we already already named it, we've got to check that. Now it's called read data. It doesn't take any parameters because it needs no data from us. All it's going to do is return data. So we can then take the name of that with the brackets to call that um, function. The next part is another function to display all the data in a table format, which we'll come back to. Because I've now hit a function, I'm going to go and code that. Now you'll see we've got these imports here because this one is going to use dates. I thought it would be useful to look at dates just in case they come up in the coursework and uh, it's going to advance your skills a little more and show us some of the more predefined functions and, an, and another variable type format so you'll actually know more than you need to hear. So we need a local array to store uh, that data. So I'm just going to call it data. We could call it the same name as the one below and it would have no effect. So blank array, which we know is going to be a 2D array. Open file, hopefully you know that we can say um, File equals, now again, that's just a variable name, call it something sensible, file is a sensible name. The open command, and we're typing the name of what file we want to access, it's obikeshire.csv. We want to read what's in there, so we're opening it with the read command, rather than the write or append command. Then, we want to read the lines, so we know we use a variable called read lines equals um, File dot uh, sorry, it's the functions called read lines. We want to call the variable lines and the function we use that built-in predefined function that's made and tested for us. We just call. So now we have that horrible looking uh, list of lines, which we'll just check out to see how unformatted it is. In fact, I can't run it right now because of these um, parts right here see if that fixes things. Uh, that's going to cause an error. Let's just comment these out for now. Don't you make that. This is just to show you what happens. Uh, main not defined. Where's that gone? Didn't mean to comment out that one. So we should hopefully see this horrible format. We can see the uh, ASCII character in there for a new line. And we're going to obviously get rid of those. So let me take that part out again. Keep my good indentation and blank lines up here. So for all the lines, so for i in range, start at zero and run to the length of lines. Cool. Then we want to get rid of those non-printable characters, those backslashes. 
So we want to say lines at the current index because now we're dealing with an array and we're dealing with an individual string in the array at a time equals lines at i dot strip. After we've stripped it, we can print it again just to see what it looks like. And it's still an individual string. We'll still see all the commas, but you can see all the other junk has been removed. So let's take that line out. Now we want to append it to our array, which we called data, which is not a great name. So it's to data dot append the current lines. Now I could run this just now and it would work fine until we get to the later stages. So let's just check out what lines at I is at that that point, or sorry, data at I is at that point. You will see that it's exactly as it was before. So the big difference that we get is when we actually do this part proper, properly, we have to split that data based on the comma because it's a comma separated value and now you can see when we print out data i, they're all split up. It looks similar to what was printed before but it is totally different and now it's in the 2D array and we can print out the, the, the username of the person by putting in the two coordinates each time. So now that we've tested to make sure our 2D array has been stored properly, and again, these are individual tests you guys should be running on your coursework. You should be planning these so that you can be doing ongoing testing. I commented this line out because it was getting an error, because it wasn't quite finished yet. The date is a, an interesting um, function. Um, let me comment it out again and show you the format it comes out in. So if we print, um, I'll have to look up here again, date.today, date.today, and run this, you'll see that the date format is indeed year, and then month, and then day. So we have to turn those three integers that we have here into one date. So instead of having three variables, we're going to have one that we're going to append to the end of the records. So what you can see here is, hopefully some familiar stuff, we have casting going on twice here. So what we want to do is whatever the current um, item is in data, so data at um, position i for all of these, data at i and data at i but that's going to return a record on its own we've got to then say okay the year is index i but at position one so you want i position one to be the year and then if you miss the data the month is at position two in the index zero one two Oops, and then three has uh, the date. So what we can do is, if I now show you higher date, when we print that out, um, it's not going to print properly. Or well, it is. That's fine. I thought I'd have to convert it to a string. So you can see it's been converted into that correct format. And then we want to append it. So data at i dot append higher date which means it's um, now going to, let's take that square bracket for me, it's going to throw on that date to the end of the list. So running just to make sure we get no errors, we can print to make sure it's working. What we want to put on the next position is the, the number of days that the, the, the byte's been used for. So if we look at the calculation there, Days used equals today's date. Now this is the part of putting the comments here. To get today's date, you would um, use this function here. We use the date inbuilt function, um, and we use the uh, today um, function call. So we're using that from the libraries of uh, date time, and we're using a built-in function of that. Um, so we want to subtract that from the higher date. 
and that will calculate how many days that the users use that link for. So let's do print days use just to see um, how much days has been used for each of them. So you can see it's 236 and 112. So um, if I just change this to the, the date of birth of someone, for example, so I put my date of birth in here, uh, eight, five, it, this would tell us how many days old I was, which is it's quite a lot, I guess. Um, and you could do other things to get, um, you could then, let me work out how many years old I am and divide this by 365. This may throw an error. This is me just trying to show you um, how it works. It's, it's because the days has been printed out itself. It should actually be years. It's working out there. It's just it's throwing that out itself. So that's how we can manipulate the dates and work out how many days old and how many years old you are and so on. But obviously you don't have to do that, just showing you how it works. Now we need to append that to our list. Data i equals uh, sorry, dot append days used. Uh, then we need to return it. So I'm just going to print it before we do that so we can see it. So let's print the full array. Now look, I'm doing this outside of the loop after all of them have been added. So you can see there that we've created these um, two new rows. It's adding this uh, date type. So this is actually quite useful to see um, the format of it. So you can see that first date is the date it's been hired from. And then the second one is how many days that they've been using it for. So we can get rid of that. And then we want to do return. And we want to return all of that data which means it's then returned and stored in this bike hires variable, which is a 2D array of records. Next, we need a procedure because it's going to return no data. That's going to display all the data. Now, that's already been started for you too. It's in here, display data. You can see how the parameter it requires is the 2D array of all the data. There's no returns, which is why it's not a function because it is no return value and it's very easy this one because it's the same as all of our print statements so let's call that function first of all we're doing display this display data now the local variable we're passing to it here is called bike hires but here i've referred to it as data let's just change that call it bike hires call it something that makes sense to you now the header we need to put columns for all of the things that we're going to display. So hopefully you can remember that we use the print and then we set up this really simple but difficult to remember um, formatting. So we have 0 to 10 characters followed by a tab and then we have uh, the first index with 10 characters followed by the tab, which is just padding out all of the things. So we're going to have the username, the date, returned, and days used. So we need four columns that we're going to display, followed by, remember the, the slash as well. It's, the, it's not forward slash, it's a backslash, which is the one that um, is very rarely used. Now that needs to be inside quote marks. And then we are formatting the next piece of text along here. Now technically we, we don't need this for the first part, you could just print them out, but it's nicer if we stick to this formatting because then we can just copy paste the rest of it and everything's nice and neat and tabulated. And the final one is days, days used. Now let's just check that that's printing that nice and formatted. You can see there if I stretch it out a little bit, um, it is in fact displaying perfectly fine. Now we want to repeat for all the records in a 2D array. So this is the same as the reading in one. Uh, it's the same for uh, all of the read functions and write functions we do. We have to iterate, we have to loop around all of the items in our, in our array in our, in our, of the records. Now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy and paste that print line and then just change these parts to suit. So let's do one piece at a time. Where are we getting the username from? It's coming from bike hires. 
The bike hires is a 2D array, which means we need two coordinate positions, if you like. The first coordinate position relates to the record, the row they're in, so number 1, 2 and 3, but remembering the we number from 0, so Perky is at position 0, McAlpine at 1 and Norris at 2. So that's being controlled by this variable here. That's why we have a control variable in the loop. So if I put I there, that means it will print out something from this particular row when it's that number it's hit. Now the username is at index 0 there. So if we put in I0 and run it, we can see now that it's printed out Perky, McAlpine, Norris, and then it's printing out date returned and days used because um, we told it to print that, I guess. And we have bike hires, and the next one's date. So let's see if we can do this. So we want position I, and then the date that they hired it from is not at 1, 2, or 3. We appended that up here. We appended that into the, the next position along. So it's even after false. So it's at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. At the fifth position is where we have stored um, the date that they first hired the bike on. So this might trigger an error when we run it because this is a string it's expecting and it will be getting a date. Now you can see that it printed out 10, which is technically not correct and it's messed up the rest of our formatting. That is a date variable that's been returned. Whereas the first one was a string, which is fine. So if we then cast that date and turn it into a string and run it again, you'll see then it prints out the date that the person hired this bike from. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to print these other ones off. Days used is uh, another date variable and returned is also Oh, it's not a date, it's a, it's, an, it's a boolean, of course, because it's true or false. Now, when you get that table displaying correctly, that's everything you're expected to do for this task. However, the people that are looking to achieve A star should be going above and beyond here, and I'll offer you house points in return for achieving this. What I want is another function that's called a procedure, rather, because there's no return values, that writes me a new file, that should basically say Perky um, has not returned the bike and Norris has not returned the bike and maybe calculate a fine for it for the number of days that they've used it. So let's charge them $10 per day that they've used it. So I want it to say here on another, C uh, another text file or CSV file if you wish, text file is fine. However you want to display it in this file is fine. I want to say Perky has not returned the bike and owes $1,100. Norris has not returned the bike and owes $550, whatever it may be, based on a $10 fine per day that they've used it. Now that's an A star section there. It's not even as difficult as the coursework, so everyone is capable of doing it. And I will give it house points to those who do successfully complete that part. So go ahead, if you add in extra pieces, go and add in another function to add a new user that writes it out to the file. I'll give you five house points for that. If you add in another function that works, go and sort the file on username. I'll give you another three house points. For every awesome thing you do, I will throw house points at you as long as it's your own work and you can explain it to me. So the more you do, the more house points I'll give to you. Impress me.